back with another video. So if you haven't heard yet, there's a very important by-election uh, tomorrow in Toronto in the St. Paul's riding, which generally speaking would not be a big deal. But because this is a liberal stronghold and it has been since the early 90s, and it's getting close to being a conservative riding for the first time since 1993, I thought we'd watch this little video here kind of previewing it, and then we'll talk about it after. 24 voters in a downtown Toronto riding will be casting ballots in what could be an unusually consequential by-election. Toronto St. Paul's is considered a safe liberal seat. It was held by former MP Carolyn Bennett since 1997 until she stepped down earlier this year. In 2021, Dr. Bennett won the riding with just under 50% of the vote. With Pierre Polyev's Conservatives leading the Liberals by as much as 20 points in the national polls, some are anticipating a much closer race than in previous years, or perhaps even a Conservative upset in what is often deep red Toronto. Polls analyst Eric Grenier has been keeping a close eye on this race. So when you look at the riding of St. Paul, Eric, it is historically a Liberal riding. Even if it's close, even if the Liberals hold on to it, but if it's close, how significant is that for the party? It is going to be pretty significant because they won it by about 24 points last time. If they end up winning it this time by, let's say, five points or less, that is a huge swing. That is a nearly 20-point swing in the polls. And there are a lot of ridings that the Liberals won by 20 points last time. There'd be a lot of incumbent MPs who'd be looking at that swing and saying, I'm not sure if I like my chances all that much in the next general election. So for the Liberals, a win will still be a win because... Uh, you know, you can blame turnout, you can blame the fact that it's a, it's, you know, the first day of summer kind of by-election, that maybe it doesn't represent all that much what's happening in the rest of the country. But if the Conservatives can get pretty close, I don't think the questions about Justin Trudeau's leadership go away. And maybe that means that's almost a victory of their own for the Conservatives if this turmoil that can, uh, that is currently embroiling the Liberal Party continues over the summer. Uh, a win is certainly going to be a win, but not all wins are created equal for the Liberals in Toronto St. Paul's. And Toronto Star Ottawa Bureau Chief Tata McCharles was recently in the riding and reports on what she heard and saw on the ground. So here's the thing I found fascinating. You ask the candidates, you ask the campaigns, and they'll tell you, here are the top issues in this riding. It's housing, affordability, cost of living, groceries, whatnot, and anti-Semitism, the rise of anti-Semitism and uh, attacks in the riding. It's a, a, a riding that has the fifth largest Jewish population in Canada. So, you know, the Middle East conflict is in play according to the campaigns. But when I stopped people on the street and asked them about what's in play for you, to a person, it was leadership. It was the question of Justin Trudeau and his leadership of the Liberal Party and the government and through various crises, and their questions around Poiliev and the Conservative leader. So, you know, Justin Trudeau is a known quantity, and that's not necessarily the best thing at this moment because people are tired of him. And as the national, so go the national poll, so goes the riding. People are, I detected quite a lot of resistance to the idea that he's he would be seeking, leading the party to seek a fourth mandate. And on the other side of that is people questioning they don't really know Pierre Poiliev. He's still a bit of an enigma to a downtown, midtown Toronto riding electorate. Um, a lot of people are interested in what he has to say about affordability and housing, but they're not sure about the overall pi package. For full coverage of the by-election in Toronto, St. Paul's, follow us on social media. Yeah, and you know, that's a decent point, right? Like Pierre Poiliev is kind of, well, he is an unknown because even though he says a lot of you know, like right wing populist kind of things that people like, like, you know, talking about immigration and affordability and, you know, cost of living and groceries and rent and mortgage and the price of houses. You know, he resonates with most Canadians. They just don't know if they trust him as a leader yet. And to be fair, well, he's been the leader of the Conservative Party and he seems to be doing a pretty good job, but that's a much different uh, task than being the leader of a country. So people are a bit skeptical, right? Especially when you have these these liberal talking points where they just continue to, you know, every person who's a right wing a politician is the same thing as a mega politician. They're just like Trump and it scares people who don't really pay attention. Uh, now, that being said, you know, the last time this riding had an election, the, conser the, the liberals won by almost 25 points, as that gentleman said. So if it does become where, you, you know, you get into that you know, maybe the Liberals win, but it's only by four or five points. That's a huge swing. That's very concerning, even if you 
win? Because you might win this riding, you know, in in a by election, but w- would you win in a federal election? Maybe not. That's within you know, just about within the margin of error. So that could be something. You know, that, that would be very concerning to the Liberal Party and very exciting for the Conservative Party, because if you can get that writing, I mean, what hope is left if you're a Liberal in a federal election? I mean, if you're losing that strong of a writing, I mean, you've lost so many other writings already. I mean, these MPs know that they're out on their ass in about a year or just over a year, right? So uh, the other thing that a lot of people have been saying is if the Conservatives do pull off this win, Will that make Justin Trudeau just say, okay, you know what? We're getting killed in the polls. The world's laughing at us. Everyone hates me right now except for, you know, 20% of the population. And we just lost a liberal stronghold riding. Maybe that would be enough to get him to resign. And again, this might be more false hope. I've, you know, I've been saying this pretty much since I've had the, since I started with this channel just over a year ago. That, hey, you know, maybe he'll resign and maybe we'll get an election. And every time I say it, I get disappointed, and I'm sure all of you are disappointed as well. So I don't want to, you know, give up like some or give this false hope that if the Liberals lose this riding, he will resign, because I still think his ego would get in the way of it. I still think that he wants to bat- battle it out with Pierre Polyev, even if that means getting embarrassed in the end. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think that if this riding goes conservative tomorrow or today, uh, sorry, later tonight, would that? put more pressure on Trudeau to resign? Or do you agree with me where, you know, you think his ego's too big and he's going to make sure they get their pensions and all that before uh, an election happens? Um, So again, guys, thank you so much for watching. That's going to be it for this video. If you do live in the St. Paul's Toronto riding, please go out and vote if you're conservative. If you're not conservative, just pretend it's COVID again. Stay in your house. Stay safe. Don't go and vote, right? Just I'm kidding, of course, if you're a liberal conservative, go out and vote for whoever you want. However, if you want change, go out and vote for conservative, vote vote for the conservative candidate, because that's the best chance we have now. Thanks again so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll be back shortly with another video.